want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife, still playing the race card. Hi, I'm Paul K. Pies. Are you horrendously unpopular with no friends? Have you recently been ridiculed by a parody cartoon? Is the world laughing at you and your half-wit husband? Do you possess the Sadim touch where everything you get involved in turns to shit? Are you talent-free, devoid of originality, and so empty your burps echo? Will nobody take you seriously? Are you being harangued, criticized, and lampooned, and it's not your fault? Unable to turn your unpopularity around, struggling to draw sympathy, then you need the race card. Yes, with the race card, you can turn your opponents into foam-flecked mouthed, swivel-eyed racist bigots. Get out of jail, public opinion jail, scot-free. Receive manufactured sympathy from brainless followers. Get guaranteed support from agenda-wielding wokists. Forget you've never done anything for anybody of colour. Expunge your record of only ever having relationships with white people. Ensure your opponents are shut down by branding their free speech opinions as racist hate speech. Apply for your race card today and, for a limited period only, receive a 30-day supply of facial bronzer. I'm Paul K. Pies, and this has been an advertisement for the race card. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Following on from that blatant advertisement from Paul K. Pies, it would seem that Harry's wife has reached for the race card once again as a consequence, of course, of her plummeting popularity and the repeated threats to control that she's experiencing by the South Park parody, by the reportage of that South Park parody, the fallout from Spare, the shit flick series which left so many people nauseated, and therefore struggling to deal with this tsunami of challenges, she's reached for the race card once again. And it comes courtesy of CNN with an opinion by Sophia A. Nelson that states, Harry's wife's crash course on blackness. Harry's wife needs sisters, the report states. No, I'm not talking about blood relatives like the litigious half-sister from whom she is estranged. By sisters, I mean in the African-American vernacular, women who will be part of her tribe, who will watch her back, love her, laugh with her, and be there for her as she confronts the most invidious challenges that anti-black racism can throw her way. If Harry's wife didn't know before taking up with Prince Harry that those kinds of challenges would be coming, she surely knows that now. The past few years, during which the couple announced that they were stepping down as senior royals and left Great Britain, will have been an education for the Duchess of Sussex and erstwhile star of the cable television show Suits. Again, she wasn't the star. Harry's wife and Harry endured a barrage of criticism after the move. Justifiably so. But the scrutiny and criticism of Harry's wife began long before that. And Harry made it clear from early days that negative press coverage was a reflection of racism towards the biracial Duchess, whose father is white and mother is black. Once again, this is pushing this narrative which is false. There are some knuckle-dracking idiots that have issued racist language towards the Duchess of Sussex, but it very much is in the minority. What has actually happened is she's been roundly criticised for her behaviour, which has got nothing to do with her colour. Indeed, she has held herself out as white. Many people, upon first viewing her, thought that she was Caucasian, Hispanic at a push. Nobody thought, oh yes, she's black or half black, she's of a woman of colour, I'll now be racist towards her. Even the unconscious bias of which 
Prince Harry has spoken would not be applicable because people didn't see her as black. They saw her as white. Therefore, where would the bias come from? Nevertheless, the race card continues to be played. And in this article, the writer states, over the last few years, when it comes to weaponizing the media, the Sussexes have shown that they can give as good as they get, lashing out at their critics, first in a sit-down with celebrity interviewer Oprah Winfrey, or rather a huge winfest, then with a multi-part shit flick special. They deliver the coup de grace with a blockbuster tell-all book penned by the prince. So after years of wall-to-wall -wall media coverage, what's left to say about Harry's wife and Harry? Plenty, if you're African-American. Black women, like me, who sat back and watched the media onslaught against Harry's wife, have been nodding knowingly over the past few years. We have seen it all before. Now, it may help to have a little bit of background about Sophia A. Nelson. And the reason that I went to this was that as I was looking at the piece in CNN, there's a small picture of Sophia A. Nelson. And below her is a picture of Prince Harry. And those two pictures, he looks a little bit pinker than her. And I thought to myself, this is interesting, that uh, a white lady, or possibly slightly Hispanic maybe, is supporting Harry's wife. Nothing wrong with that, of course. But, of it, but what is interesting is that she then wrote, as a black woman, which then caused me to look up more pictures of her. And it can be seen there that the picture that's used by CNN is one that is a little misleading. The other pictures demonstrate that indeed she can be seen to be a person of colour. Uh, and it also enabled me to understand more about who she is. She's a German-born author and journalist. And she received a BA in Economics and Political Science from San Diego State University and became politically active as a Republican in 1988. She was legal counsel to New Jersey Governor Christine Todd Whitman and ran for Congress in New Jersey's 1st Congressional District in 1996. She was also a GOP counsel for the House Government Reform and Oversight Committee, but ultimately decided to become a journalist and author. As of 2020, she is a political independent. She's written Black Woman Redefined, Dispelling Myths and Discovering Fulfillment in the Age of Michelle Obama, and E Pluribus One, Reclaiming Our Founders' Vision for a United America. So... Those are her credentials, useful to put some context to the author of the piece. And she continues, Black women like me who sat back and watched the media onslaught against Harry's wife have been nodding knowingly over the past few years. We have seen it all before. We live it every day in the form of microaggressions and outright racism. African Americans were taken aback, but not too many of us were truly surprised when she faced the wrath of a British tabloid press and more subtle disapproval by some members of royal family itself. Uh, yes, but what was the basis of that disapproval? It wasn't based along racial lines, it was behavioural lines, something once again the playing of the race card conveniently forgets. Many people of colour celebrated Harry's wife's marriage to Harry as a sign of racial progress, but as we watched the treatment received by Harry's wife, Black America summoned its collective indignation. Did it? as it does when one of us is unjustly slightly slighted. Well, it's not unjust. She's not been slighted again because of her race. It's because of her behaviour. Few of us consort with royalty, but many of us have found ourselves in situations where it's been suggested none too subtly that we're not quite up to standard. In those moments, we've had to deftly show the doubters who belittle us and who hope to make us feel small, colleagues, classmates, bosses, sometimes even underlings, that they have greatly underestimated us. And so, in the black community, there has been no small amount of umbrage taken on Harry's wife's behalf. The interesting thing is, Harry's wife only relatively recently has been introduced to the harsh realities of racial animus. In an episode of her Archetypes podcast, where she frequently delves into discussions about racial identity, she revealed that it was only after she started dating Prince Harry that she started to understand what it was like to be treated like a black woman. Well, that's because hitherto she hadn't held herself out as one. Another point that is conveniently glossed over. Because up until then I'd been treated like a mixed woman and things really shifted. And did they ever, the author writes, 
how his wife has endured overt media abuse for being black at an industrial strength level that most of us mercifully have not had to face. That is patently untrue. There has been no overt media abuse for her being black. There has been overt media abuse because of her behaviour. With a few minor hiccups here and there, she has proven to be amazingly resilient on the world stage. Really? Amazingly resilient by complaining repeatedly about the way that she's treated. That's not resilient. It's pity play after pity play. All part of a sympathy symphony. It always struck me as something of an irony that Harry's wife was deemed too black for Britain's elite. As one writer put it, at the time of Harry and Harry's wife's engagement, no black or brown person had ever held a great office of state in the United Kingdom. In fact, to this very day, thanks to Harry's wife, Britain has had more black princesses than the BBC has ever had black controllers. In the United States, meanwhile, if you passed her on the sidewalk, you might be forgiven for not realising that she has black ancestry and isn't just another sun-kissed Californian, or one who has had a passing acquaintance with a tanning bed. Indeed, in the genetic grab bag that determines what we look like, half-black Harry's wife ended up with a complexion much more like that of her white father. Growing up, it appears that even with her black mum, race seems not to have been much of a topic of conversation. Harry's wife's mother, Doria Ragland, acknowledged in the shit flicks Harry and Harry's wife documentary released in late 2022 that helping her daughter forge a black identity while growing up was not something she focused on much, and she says it's a decision she now regrets. So for Harry's wife, the last few years have been a crash course in blackness, and she's been a quick study. She infused her wedding with African-American themes. She counts Serena Williams among her long-term friend, long-time friends. She hasn't got any friends. Hollywood director Tyler Perry is godfather to one of her children. Uh, yes, uh, why don't you mention all of the black men that she's dated? Oh. This clearly is not a woman who is running for her African, running from her African ancestry. Then is she, what about all of the visits that she makes to Africa? Oh. If anything, she's leaning into it. And black people on both sides of the pond, for the most part, love her for it. Do they? Do they truly? I've seen lots of comment from lots of black people who saw straight through her. And I'd be interested, if you're a person of colour, listening to this, what's your view about her? We embrace Harry's wife because she's been baptised by the scrutiny of race, except she hasn't, in the particular way that those of us with melanated skin often go through, even when that melanin is present only in small amounts. I can relate to the challenge Harry's wife faces, as I have two adult mixed-race nieces, they, like Harry's wife, are beautiful and smart. And they too have struggled with racial identity issues. How could they not? I used to worry that my influence on them and the influence of my mum, their parental grandmother, their paternal grandmother, two black women who are anchors in their lives, might be woefully inadequate for the life they were going to face ahead. In a world that puts a premium on fair skin. Keeping grounded and yet being prepared for the inevitable racial onslaught when comes is another reason to lean into the support from your black sisters. So, as we call out our honour roll of notable achievers this Black History Month, not too many of us will take issue with adding to the roster Harry's wife, Duchess of Sussex, actress, philanthropist, podcaster, useless, and mother to two grandchildren of Britain's ruling monarch, the soon-to-be-crowned King Charles III. All of which makes Harry's wife, at this month-long celebration of blackness comes to a close, a true black history icon loved and supported by sisters everywhere. Do you believe that she's a black history icon? What has she done for black people? To my mind, she's held herself out as being Caucasian, that she repeatedly has sought to erase her black features by having work done on her nose, by flattening her hair, by lightening her skin, and only bronzes it up when she has to be the chameleon that she is, and engage with people of colour. If I were a person of colour, I would say, what have you done for us? Why should I hold you up as an icon? And of course, this smacks of another PR puff piece that's being rolled out as a consequence of her plummeting popularity. That once again, Harry's wife, unable to turn things around with the pity play that she issued following the South Park cartoon, has now had to go to the ever-reliable race card in an attempt to engender sympathy through it, 
Also, to maintain that she's had a rough ride of it and therefore she deserves that sympathy and support. And then furthermore, to go with the absolute reach of suggesting that she's a true black history icon. Do you, valuable viewers, regard her as such? I'd be interested to hear from you in the comments section as we see once again the desperation that she exhibits to try and nullify these repeated threats to control through another PR Puff piece, but this time using the race card. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.